What's going on everybody? Welcome to part 14 of our Go Language tutorial series. In this tutorial, what we're going to be talking about is the basics of maps. So in the Go programming language, uh, if you want to store something in the sort of you know, key and values system, the way that you're going to do that is with maps. So let's just go over some basic examples. This should be a pretty quick tutorial, and then we'll actually apply it to a real use case in the next tutorial with our news aggregator web app. So um, to begin, let's just start. We're just going to have a, a, a fresh uh, script here just because it should be pretty simple. Um, I'm going to go ahead and import. And actually, we're just going to use format. So I'll just import format. Um, also, uh, yeah, let's, actually, let's just do func main. And then we'll just do everything in here. So a typical map is going to be defined like so. So like you could say var grades or something like that and then map um, and then this will be a map containing basically strings or basically it'll be a string uh, key and then the value will be float32. Okay, for example. So um, and actually in our case, well, we'll go with float32. That's fine. Um, I'm probably not going to make floats, but anyway. <laughs> um, so this would be a grades map, right? So in theory, you know, you might have students' names to their grades in your class. Okay. So um, now, obviously, we don't need this since we're inside of a function. So you'd probably have something more along the lines of grades colon equals. But also a map is just a reference type. So it actually doesn't have any values or anything like that. If you want to have it have values, you need to use goes make. So you're just going to encase this in make. And that's actually going to go ahead and initialize it for you and all that. And then what we can do is start to actually add values to it and get values from it and all that fun stuff. So uh, let's go ahead. Now that that's done, what we can do is we can start adding things. And it's just like a Python dictionary. So basically, the way that you do that is you just say grades. And then don't forget to do double quotes. I always want to do single quotes. Uh, Timmy. And yes, that's his real name. It's like the you know how hipsters are doing it these days. It's like they're given like nicknames, real names. So anyways, yeah, Timmy. I don't know, not my kid. Anyways, uh, he got a 42. Um, and I guess that nickname didn't help him very much in school. And then let's go ahead and give a few more. Uh, we're gonna do Jess again. What's going on here? Um, anyway, Jess got a 92. So good, good for Jess. And then finally, let's just add one more. And then let's say this is uh, Sam. And Sam got a uh, 67. Okay, so we have that. And then now what we can do is format dot print line. We can just we can print all of grades. So I'll just go ahead and save that, and then we'll bring this up. Go run go tut dot go. Cool. Um, so as you can see here, that's just the full map. Now generally you're probably not gonna like print out your whole map, um, but you can if you want. Um, also, what we can do is we can begin to, like, we can take values and assign them to specific variables. So we could say, like, I don't know, Tim's grade. Oh, you know what? We should probably do it this way. Tim's Tim's grade. People are getting angry. So uh, so we found the, the style gods uh, from my tutorials. Uh, so some people were pointing out, first of all, like, these, this would be, you know, your, your styles for Python if you're going to give a variable. But in Go, first of all, you'd probably want to capitalize it because it should be exported most likely. Um, and then, yeah, do like basically title casing. Um, yeah, cool. Also, just for the record, you can also do Go format. So Go FMT and then your actual script. And then basically what this will do is it'll kind of like fix all your all your uh, style mistakes for you. So if you're uh, if you're not, if you're someone like me who doesn't really pay much attention to it, maybe that's your new best friend. I don't know. Anyway, um, back to the, the tutorial. Um, oh, sorry. Yeah, Tim's grade uh, colon equals grades um, Timmy, and for that matter, probably grades should be capitalized too. Um, anyway, uh, we'll use it as a, we'll, we'll assume that for some reason we wanted it to be internal. So, so, uh, so now we can do that, and then we could say yeah, format uh, print line. Uh, let's print Tim's grade. We'll save that. Come back up here. Go run, go tut. And so we got the full map because we were printing that out. But also we got a 42 there. Um, unfortunately, because Tim was doing so poorly in our class, um, 
he's been he's, he's just been dropped from the class basically we're pushing him back a grade um it's a really sad situation but anyways if you want to remove something you can just use the delete syntax so just delete and then delete uh from where we're going to delete from grades and then what are we going to delete well we're we're deleting all little timmy goodbye timmy and then what we can do is let's just cut and paste down here uh we'll save that and let's run this one more time go run go tut.go so now as you can see tim is no longer with us uh finally uh the last thing that we can do is not have multiple cursors cool uh, and what we're going to do now is iterate through a a map i almost called it a dictionary anyway um which is probably a common task that you're going to need to do so when you uh, iterate through this it's kind of um Basically, you're going to use the, the range uh, keyword. I'm pretty sure we've used range already. Um, but uh, yeah, we have. So before, when we used range, it returned an index and a value, right? And we just took the index and we just used underscore, basically. Because uh, if you wanted the index, cool. Now, in the case of a dictionary, a dictionary already, like, if you wanted to iterate over that dictionary, in theory, it could, like, in Python, when you iterate over it, I said dictionary. <laughs> anyway, I knew I was going to do that. Map. In Python, if you were to iterate over a dictionary, you would get back just like the key. And then if you wanted the value, you would do the dictionary key thing. Um, but if you iterate over a map in Go language, it will return, you can return both the key and the value. So for example, you would say for k comma v, so key value in um, range grades, um, we can iterate over that. So now we could just say format print line uh, K. Well, we could just say, well, let's do, um, let's do K. Sorry, it's undercase K and then colon comma V. So that'd be like the student's name and then their grade, something like that. Let's go ahead and come up here. Go run, go tut dot go. Cool, and then basically we've iterated over it, and then now, yeah, you, you've, you've got the, the student's name and the grade. Okay, pretty cool, um, but obviously super simple example. Uh, the other thing that you'll probably notice and that we're gonna kind of exemplify in the next tutorial is like, it doesn't appear super simple. Like how, what, if, what if we wanted more than just a float 32 here? Like what if we wanted multiple values? Could we add multiple values? Like for example, could we get away with, I don't know, throwing in, um, you know, a list or a two, you know, like a, like a float 32 and string or int and a float 32 and so on. And um, no. So, so what if you do want to have multiple values there? Well, as you've seen so far, uh, structs are your best friend in Golang. So actually you would just create your own type that might have multiple values. And that's what you pass there if you want to do that, which is something we are going to have to do in the next tutorial. So anyways, if you have questions, comments, concerns on maps, uh, leave them below. Otherwise, I will see you in the next tutorial.